if you're in a place in your career where you're like, man, I wish I could get more out of it than I am today, just keep in mind, growing complacent, getting lazy, being comfortable, pushing off you know, all the responsibilities of the business on other people. That's why you get paid twice you know, a month, at least if you're on salary typically, and that's why your earning potential is limited. What if the real risk isn't leaving your corporate job, but staying in it? If you're comfortable in your tech job today, layoffs aren't the only risk that you face, unfortunately. Seven years ago, my life was turned upside down when I finally realized how trapped I had become. I actually developed chronic insomnia and anxiety, and eventually it emptied my bank account. All because I refused to accept that I had outgrown working for corporations. In this episode, I'd like to help you get a sober view of what staying in corporate jobs actually can cost you. I hope this gives you the courage to explore more empowering ways of working if you've gotten to that point that you need to escape the corporate tech grind. So first, let's talk about the lie of corporate stability, how it's so easy to get sucked into it, and how one day you may wake up finding that your options are actually less the longer that you try to climb the ladder. first thing that's really important for us to talk about today is that there are some cognitive biases at play. There's some ways that we think about corporate work that tend to bias us towards staying there that actually don't do us a service. They actually put us in danger. The first one of these is the status quo bias. You've heard of this before saying, you know, about staying in the status quo or maintaining the status quo. And really that bias is just our bias towards what's familiar. If we've done nothing over our career, but worked corporate job after corporate job after corporate job, that environment of working corporate jobs becomes what we're used to, what we're familiar with. And so we wanna maintain that status quo. This becomes a bias that traps us. I've talked about in earlier episodes on the channel how I worked for a consulting agency for a decade in the latter half of my career, and about halfway into my time there, about four to five years in, I already knew it was probably better if I left the company. There were a variety of changes and circumstances I've talked about in some of my stories on the stories playlist of the channel, but I decided to just stay there because I'd grown complacent, I'd grown comfortable, and it was just with what I was familiar with. So if you're in a situation where familiarity is the main thing holding you back, just remember that is a bias. It's the status quo bias. Next, there's the normalcy bias. This is really a bias we have that we think there aren't really any negative consequences coming. We think the likelihood of something going wrong is lower than it really is. We want to maintain the illusion that things are normal. And this bit me hard when that same consulting agency I just talked about, I was there for about seven years and suddenly they were bought out by a Chinese company. And I and many other consultants that had invested at that point seven years for me, some of the other employees like 10, 15 years of their life, climbing that ladder with promises and hope from the CEO on you know what staying there and helping grow the company meant. And the moment that company was sold, he left the company and everybody was just kind of left to fend for themselves. And a lot of people's hopes were really ultimately dashed. So if you continue to stay in corporate jobs because it's normal, it's familiar, and basically you don't think anything's going to go wrong, remember, that's a bias that you have. There's really no guarantee that unforeseen events can't unfold at some point that force you to have to make significant changes when you're not really ready. So next, let's talk about what are the hidden risks of staying at corporate jobs? There's some risks that I don't think we think about. Maybe we're aware of them, but we it's very uncomfortable for us to confront this. The first one is just skills becoming obsolete. 
the tech industry changes so fast. It doesn't matter if you're a programmer, you're in product management, you're a manager, the processes, the practices, the technologies that we work with are not stagnant, right? And if you stagnate, you just stay in one position for too long or one you know, set of skills for too long, you're always putting yourself at danger that at some point marketing yourself or finding future employment is only going to be that much harder. And unfortunately, corporations don't really help us this much with that. And the second hidden risk is economic uncertainty. None of us really know what the future holds in ter terms of the economy. And if a company gets to a place where they need to lay off a lot of people because a product that they have isn't as profitable or just the business is struggling, you probably know companies don't really reward loyalty. This idea that if I'm loyal to my company, then when things get difficult, they won't lay me off. If you don't get laid off due to a round of layoffs, it's very rare that it's because of the loyalty that you put in. It's mostly just because you may have an opportunity to be more valuable to them. Basically, something about how you work is important to them, and that's just happenstance. So again, you know, a hidden risk to all this is just that as the economy changes, as your company changes, as the products they're building change, as the desirability of those in the market changes, you don't really have any control when you work for a corporation over how to navigate your career in a way that's safer by working for a corporation. It's actually more out of your control. And finally, another hidden risk is the opportunity costs. You know, if you decide to work for a corporation, you're committing yourself to one company and its goals and any other opportunities that you could pursue when you're an employee, it's much harder to pursue them because you're already dedicated to a company. You really can lose out on potential by doing this. You know, when I worked at that uh, consulting agency for many years, I was continuing to learn more and more technical skills, and I did learn a lot about consulting, which was really valuable to me. I've talked about that in many episodes on the show. But when I finally decided to work for myself and I was kind of forced into a situation where I had to learn some totally new skills, you know, I started to learn how to market myself, how to sell, how to do, you know, digital marketing and content marketing. I had to learn how to set up my own website, my, you know, email marketing all the domain related stuff, lots of security related things, hosting, you know, I had to uh, create legal contracts for people that get coaching through me. I had to incorporate. I suddenly had to deal with, you know, taxes and all the things around self-employment. So, you know, when you don't work, when you work for a company, rather, you're losing the opportunity to grow in ways that you would if you stay working for corporations because they kind of insulate you from business skills that could actually help you be more in control of your future. And then there's the financial limitations. When you work for a company, usually the job title that you hold is fairly well known out in the market, right? They can go out, look at what other people are paying comparable amounts for what you're doing at other companies. And so there's a little bit of a cap, actually a significant cap, depending on what you want to step out and do when you work in corporations. There's only so much money you can make. And this is why you see so many people scrambling to work for the FANG companies, you know, the, the top income or close to top that a lot of those very few companies offer because they're looking to maximize their earnings earning potential. Unfortunately, there's not enough fang jobs to go around. And so, you know, if you're in a position where you're not making as much money as you'd like, just remember choosing to work for corporations in the first place limits your earning potential beyond what you could probably reach if you decided to just kind of step out, take a chance and try to do something yourself. So next, let's talk about how self-employment can actually reduce risk. I don't think we think about this enough. I didn't think about this enough until I started working for myself. First, you can diversify your income streams. When you work for a corporation, you get one paycheck or one bill rate. And if something goes wrong with that project, you're out of luck. You know, if, if you get laid off, you're out on the open market, you're losing money, you need to scramble to find new work, right? If you work for yourself, you know, like I as a career coach now, 
I make the majority of my money from coaching, but I also make some from Patreon. I make a little bit from YouTube memberships. I have a course called Dev Pathfinder that I offer. That also provides me some income. Now, I'd like to diversify even more, but it's really nice to be in a place where like, if I don't get as many coaching clients one month, I've got some other income sources that can kind of buffer that and insulate me from that. So just remember, when you choose to work for a corporation, you're giving up the ability to diversify your income streams. Also, you're losing over or you're losing the ability to control setting rates and what you want to charge and what you want to make. When you work for yourself, you can be as creative as you want about pricing. Um, I've changed my coaching pricing five times since I started offering coaching. If I worked for a company, you know, having to negotiate my salary five times and hope that they're going to give me what I'm worth, obviously, you know, I have to still find that the market is willing to pay what I'm charging for my coaching and that there's an appropriate number of people out there that find enough value that they're willing to pay for it. But, you know, I make a lot more per hour as a coach now. Now, again, I work less hours, so that's part of the reason, but I'm in control. I can choose to change the price of my coaching. I can cho choose to change the price of my Patreon memberships, you know, anything else that I offer where when you're working for a company, you have little to hardly any control over what they pay you. You, you know, whatever you initially negotiate is pretty much where you start out. And from there, it's kind of luck of the draw if they're going to promote you or not. Now, you can do great work, and I hope you do, but you're not ultimately in control of that. The other way that working for yourself can really reduce risk is that it forces you to have a growth and adaptability mindset. This is something that's been so valuable to me. Oh my gosh. Like when I worked at corporations, I was so afraid of risk. Everything I did was I wanted to avoid risk with my company, risk with my project, risk with myself. And hey, none of us want to take just stupid, uncalculated risks, but they really prevented me from growing. They prevented me from getting to do things that maybe would, you know, really increase my value, really increase my, you know, just fun in my career and ability to do things. And when you work for yourself, you can't really be successful if you don't grow. So having a learning mindset, you know, you've heard of this, I'm sure before, if you work for yourself, you're going to be constantly presented with things that you've probably never done before. And, you know, it, it pushes you out of that sort of false sense of security when you work for a corporation where you're like, well, marketing deals with that and sales will deal with that and a manager will deal with that. Ultimately, you have to deal with it. Now, the downside of that is that if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. The upside of that is if anything goes right, you are empowered to do it. So, you know, if you're in a place in your career where you're like, man, I wish I could get more out of it than I am today, just keep in mind growing complacent, getting lazy, being comfortable, pushing off, you know, all the responsibilities of the business on other people. That's why you get paid twice, you know, a month, at least if you're on salary typically. And that's why your earning potential is limited. But if you're willing to learn, push yourself to accept that like anything that comes your way, you're capable of learning it suddenly it can open up a lot of new opportunities for growth for you that you might find like I did that I actually enjoy marketing and sales. Now, I'm not an expert at it. I'm still learning, but I always thought I'd hate those two things my entire career, you know, for 20 years of my career until I started doing this. And as I've been forced through self-employment to learn it, I found it's actually fascinating and I've and I actually enjoy it. And when we talk about adaptability, the other thing is, you know, when you work for yourself, you have to learn to adapt and be responsive. When you're on a project, sure, the your manager might change the requirements of the project or the direction of the company might change and you have to adapt. But when I've, you know, started working for myself as a career coach, I might find that people out in the tech industry, the thing that's most pressing for them to get help with suddenly changes. And now I can pivot. I can offer a new product. I can offer a new coaching package. I can begin to help them with that. And I don't have to sell a manager or a tech lead or my company on giving me the opportunity to do it. It's really just up to me to commit to it and move in that direction and offer it. So if you want to have more adaptability in your career and you want to be able to pursue things that you're excited about and not be sort of put in a box by a corporate employer, 
that's one of the biggest things you got to consider if you decide that you're just going to stay comfortable and complacent in a corporate tech job. And hey, if you're at that place in your career where you're like, man, I've had job after job after job, and you know, I'm sick of this one I'm at right now. So I guess I'm just going to go get another job. And you know, every move that you look at in the future of your career just kind of feels like the same thing. I want to let you know, if you didn't know already, there is a Patreon and a YouTube membership for this channel. It's very cheap to get in there, but there's a lot of people in this Discord that you get access to if you join. And you know, if you want to have a group of people who are kind of pushing themselves to try to grow in their career, whether they're still doing it, you know, some of them have not taken the leap to work for themselves and they're just trying to grow within, you know, consulting or typical employment. But you got people who are starting, you know, YouTube channels, starting their own thing. If that's if that's something that's interesting to you, you'd like to have a group of other people who are also doing that, not just, you know, every commenter who's available on the YouTube channel, but these are people who really are into the channel and they're also into supporting each other, check out Patreon, check out the YouTube memberships. There's a link in the description. And if you're actually at the point where you're like, you know what, I've decided I really do want to work for myself, but I don't know where to start. I don't know how to get started. I also offer a coaching package called Solopreneur Jumpstart. It's meant to jumpstart your ability to work for yourself as a solo high paid consultant. If that's something you're considering, you can also get a link to my coaching page in the description. So finally, let's talk about how can you overcome the fear of self-employment? I see a lot of people who would be awesome if they work for themselves. They'd, they'd just reach so many amazing new goals. They'd grow, but they fear it too much and it holds them back. And, and you know, I've been prey to this too. The first thing is you got to challenge your fear of the unknown. When we work these corporate jobs, we're just so comfortable. We don't want to admit it to ourselves, but we've kind of limited the amount of things that can change and go wrong. If you work for yourself, you're opening yourself up to a whole new set of possibilities, and that can create anxiety for people. I've definitely experienced that. Here's the thing. You've probably heard this. Anxiety and excitement have the exact same feeling, though, in your body. If you think of the last time you got really excited about something in your life, maybe it's been a while, and then you think about a time when you felt a lot of anxiety, even though the source of that emotion was different, the way that we experience it, our body is almost the same. So, you know, I've found that when I was working corporate jobs, I was experiencing almost no excitement in my career. And, you know, one of the things that you can do if you want to push yourself to get out of that fear based mindset is to think about what would it feel like if I started to feel more excitement again in my career? And what would it feel like if I had some adventure in my life? If I had some fun in my life again? You know, I found the longer I worked in these corporate jobs, the less fun I was to be around with people, the less fun I really experienced in my life. I did a lot of things in my free time just to cope. I've talked about how I was a marijuana addict for a long time in my career. That was sort of my way to escape from the frustration and the boredom, to be honest, of my job. But if you're ready to experience some fun, some adventure again, that can help prompt you to get out of this fear-based mindset and force you to try to grow and really do something beyond just working for corporate companies. And I found that when I did start working for myself, despite the ups and downs and some of it being, you know, unfamiliar to me, I was a lot more enjoyable for my wife to be around me, for my kids to be around me because they saw me taking risks, stepping out, doing something new, growing, being excited. You know, it was I went from just, you know, dad, dad comes home after work and he's stressed out and he, you know, smokes a joint, not that they'd see me or just, you know, does whatever to check out, plays video games to, you know, they're seeing me reading books. They're seeing me learning how to do YouTube. They're seeing me, you know, having to talk to people over Zoom and go out and meet people. And I think that can energize the relationships that you have when they see that you're pouring into yourself. You're, you haven't just gr grown completely complacent. And the other thing that can snap you out of this fear to take no action because you're just letting fear trap you is embracing risk as actually an opportunity. 
If you refuse to take any risks in your career, well, you can only expect to get the rewards that everybody else is getting. I would get frustrated often at my, you know, that consulting agency I worked for for a long time because I was always trying to introduce new offerings through the company, you know, learn new skills and try to use them to justify growing. And the company just, they didn't find as much value as I did. They didn't want to reward me as much as I wanted that reward. The only way that I was really going to get what I thought I was worth and really be able to truly grow in my career was to just quit that consulting company and do something on my own. And it wasn't until I really quit and I started doing career coaching. Now, I did do some consulting part time as well, not for the company, but solo on my own. It wasn't until I was forced to do that and I started to really lean into that, that I really started to make more money. I've talked about in other episodes on the channel that my first consulting project after I quit that agency that I'd been at for 10 years, I charged a bill rate that was basically twice the income that I was making per year when I worked for the agency. And if you want more freedom, you've got to act differently than other people. You got to not just phone it in. If you, you know, work your job and you want everybody else to tell you what to do and arrange your schedule and set up processes for you and tell you how they expect you to work, then you can only expect you're going to feel so free in your job. If you've gotten to a point that you're like, I'm so tired of the companies I work for always controlling my ability to really feel like I'm empowered and my ability to feel like I can pursue what's right for customers, then again, if you work for a corporation, don't expect that you're going to have complete freedom. You've given up that control to the company you work for. And finally, just looking at risk as something that you can calculate is really helpful. I think risk tends to be one of those things that we say we calculate our risks, but when we work for a corporation, at least when I did, I would say, oh, I take risks. I just only take calculated risks, but really it was just an excuse. I'd become super risk averse. I wasn't willing to do anything truly drastically different or new because I'd grown way too comfortable. There's nothing wrong with deciding to take a risk when it's calculated. If you completely avoid any risk, then you are truly limiting your ability to make more money, your ability to be more free, your ability to do work that's more meaningful to you. You are the only limit over that if you force yourself to work in a way that constrains your ability to take on any risk. So have you outgrown these limits that corporations have placed on you? Are you looking for some ways to really find more meaningful work? What's holding you back? Is fear the main thing that's holding you back? Have you come up with a hundred different justifications and reasons why continuing to work for companies is the best way to move forward? I'm going to make future episodes on the channel where I'm going to teach you some of the things that I had to grapple with and I learned that really helped me escape the corporate grind. But let me know in the comments, what are you facing? Why isn't this something you're entertaining? You know, I think when you have dependents, for example, I, I have three children, you're providing for them. I was providing for my wife as well. We can often feel like I have to work a corporate job because it's the only thing that gives me consistent income and my responsibilities to take care of other people. And hey, it's very honorable to provide for other people, but take a look out there. There are a lot of people that are providing for their families and they don't work corporate jobs. I would challenge you, use ChatGPT, use Google, go out there, you know, ask like, who are some people that have provided for their family, you know, without working for a corporation? How did they make the transition? This is again, something I'm gonna talk about more. But until then, what are you facing? Why isn't this something that you're willing to entertain? What's holding you back? And I hope a little of this information today has helped you think about the true risks that you face if you don't at least entertain this, if you've gotten to the point in your career where you're not experiencing the freedom or the fulfillment or the growth that you want anymore. Until next time, thanks.